is up everyone and welcome back to Jax Cosplay. My name is Jax and I do cosplay. Now today's video is going to be a little different to the normal videos here on my channel. I am not going to be making a specific prop or cosplay or having a tutorial for it, but rather I am going to be showing you guys some of the tools and materials that I use every day when making my props and cosplays. Now just a disclaimer, this is definitely not all of the different tools and materials out there that you can use for making props and cosplays. This is just the different tools and materials that I personally like to use. So if you think there is a tool or material out there that you use that you think I should go and check out, please let me know down below in the comments and I will definitely go and check out those different tools and materials. Thank you for taking time to watch this video and if you enjoy this kind of content please consider liking and subscribing so that you can get notified when I upload other cosplay and geek related videos. So the first material that we are going to get started off with is any cosplayer's bread and butter. It is none other than EVA foam. Now EVA foam comes in all different kinds uh, there's all different kinds of EVA foam, different thicknesses, different sizes. So the, t the two types of EVA foam that I like to use is first off, I like to use this puzzle mat EVA foam uh, that you normally put down on the floor of a gym or in a workshop somewhere to stand on, but it makes really great cosplays and props. Um, it's one of the cheaper forms of EVA foam. And if you're located in South Africa, uh, the best place that I've found to get it from uh, the cheapest place is Westpac. Um, it's a store that sells all sorts of plastic things and home things and all sorts of stuff. And they are the cheapest place that I find in South Africa to buy the to buy the puzzle floor mat or EVA foam. You can also buy EVA foam in the form of these large rolls, which come in two meters. Uh, there are multiple online retailers for these rolls of EVA foam. Um, if you're in the States or anywhere like that, there's TNT Cosplay Supply. Uh, SKS props have their own HD foam. Um, in South, uh, for those of you in South Africa, the best place that I've found to buy this, uh, these two meter rolls of foam is from a company called Sondor Performance Foams. Um, they've got a few branches around the country. Uh, the staff there are really helpful. Um, and yeah, so that's where I get my big rolls of EVA foam from. Um, there's a few differences there's S that, that they stock. They've got SVA foam, SPX foam. This one here that I've got is an SPX 45 foam, which is a bit more higher density, which is better for props and um, some sturdier armor pieces. They go all the way up to uh, SPX 120, which is super stiff, high density stuff. Uh, which is also really great for specific uses. Another material that's really great for cosplayers that are just starting out, or even some, some of the more advanced cosplayers, is the old humble piece of cardboard. Now this stuff, it is super easy to work with, and it is super easy to get your hands on. If you've got a delivery coming of something that you've ordered online, if you've got a new appliance like a TV or a dishwasher, you can salvage some cardboard from the boxes that those items come in. It's a really cheap material and it's, as I said, it's super easy to work with. And in fact, my Tuscan Raider helmet, the entire base of this helmet was actually built with cardboard. So there's nothing saying that you can't create awesome looking props and cosplay pieces with just some humble pieces of cardboard. Another material that I like to use that is pretty similar to cardboard is hardboard or backing board. So this is a type of cardboard that is most often used by picture framers um, and it is a pretty high density stiff kind of cardboard and when you glue multiple layers together with wood glue it becomes super strong. So strong in fact that I actually wasn't able to cut, I glued three layers together with wood glue and I wasn't able to cut it with a craft knife, I had to use a bandsaw to cut out the piece I was working with. So this is also a really great kind of material to have for working with cosplays. And if you want to get your hands on some, if there is a picture frame uh, near you in your local uh, shopping center or someone that you know of, uh, you can always go ask them if they have any scraps or offcuts because generally they can't use pieces this size for framing pictures, but this is the perfect size to make a small dagger prop or something like that. So ask them if they've got any offcuts, um, but yeah, it's a really great material. Another great material is EVA Foam's cousin, 
craft foam. Now this is quite similar to EVA foam, except it, as you can see, it is much thinner. This generally comes in thicknesses of one millimeter, two millimeter, and five millimeter. Um, you can get it in these big sheets like this or in smaller sizes, and it's a really great material for uh, making detail pieces, um, intricate pieces, and whatnot like that. So also a really great material to have in your arsenal of materials. And now we've heard of EVA foam. We've heard of craft foam, but they were all of them deceived for another foam was made. Upholstery foam. Now this is a material that is used in cosplay, but it's not often seen in cosplay. And that's because I, like many other makers, like to use this material for padding on the inside of helmets and other armor pieces to make um, them a bit more comfortable to wear. So this is also, it's a pretty soft kind of a posh foam. It's, uh, you can get it in different thicknesses all the way up from, I think this is like a eight or five mil. Yeah, I think it's an eight mil, all the way up to thick pieces that are about this thick. Um, and it's a really great soft material that you can use to pad the inside of helmets and armor pieces. So definitely something to keep in mind to make your cosplays a little bit more comfortable when you're gonna be wearing them for hours on the convention floor. Now what cosplay wouldn't be complete without an awesome prop. Whether you're making a cool fantasy sword or a sci-fi blaster, PVC pipe is an absolute necessity. Whether you're using it for the core of a sword or the barrel of a blaster, it is an excellent material that I use incredibly often when I'm making props and, and cosplays. I also often like to use it for cosplays if I want to add any small pipe details to a cosplay or anything like that. So it's not only for props, you can also use it for cosplay. Um, it's most often uh, found in a hardware store in the plumbing or electrical aisle. Um, and you get different uh, sizes, thicknesses. Um, so just find the size and thickness that would work for your needs. And finally, the last material that I want to speak about today is PVC faux leather vinyl. Um, this is a material that I have often used, whether it's to create um, fake leather effects on uh, a piece of clothing or to create a satchel for a character or to wrap the handles of props uh, so that they look like they've got a leather wrapping. Um, I, you can just get it from a fabric store. It's a lot cheaper than real leather, like a lot cheaper. So yeah, this is a really great material to have. So that brings us to the end of the materials that I like to use for my cosplays and props. There's a few other materials out there that I may not have mentioned or have forgotten about. So feel free to let me know down below in the comments. Uh, now, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but most of the tools and materials I'm going to be mentioning today are specifically for making props and also for making uh, armor pieces for cosplays as opposed to soft pieces like uh, capes or uh, fabric elements of a cosplay. Um, if, you want to, if you want me to make a video talking about the different tools and materials I like to use for making soft elements of a cosplay, uh, let me know. But yeah, so this is mostly going to be for hard elements like armor, helmets, props, etc. So now you're probably wondering how you go about cutting out all these different types of materials, whether it's the foam, the cardboard, or what have you. The three main types of things I like to use to cut out these materials is I like to use a large box cutter, which I consider to be my workhorse uh, for cutting out most of the stuff for the thick EVA foam. And then I also like to use a smaller box cutter for doing more intricate pieces. And finally, I like to use a small X-Acto blade um, for really intricate pieces. And sometimes it gets, uh, because it's got a round body, it's a little bit more comfortable to hold than this one um, if I'm gonna be cutting out pieces for a long time. I also often use a simple pair of stationary scissors uh, if I'm cutting out the thin 2mm craft foam, I can also use this on the upholstery foam or the cardboard. Um, so it's also a good idea to have a pair of scissors um, in your toolbox. Now obviously using those blades, they're going to become dull and blunt over time. So I went ahead and I got myself a basic kitchen knife sharpener, which works fantastically for sharpening all my X-Acto knives, my box cutters. Um, I haven't tried it on scissors, but I believe there's an attachment on the side for sharpening scissors. 
Um, so yeah, so this is a really good tool to invest in to keep your knives sharp and to prolong the blade life so that you're not constantly buying new replacement blades for your knives. Now that you've got all your different pieces cut out, you're going to need some way to shape them. So enter the heat gun. The heat gun is a really great tool for shaping pieces, for heating them up and for heat forming them. Whether you are working with EVA foam or sheets of acrylic plastic, it provides the perfect amount of heat to heat up your pieces. Um, a lot of people have asked me before, can I use a hairdryer to heat up EVA foam? And sadly the answer is no, because a hairdryer just does not get hot enough to heat up EVA foam. Uh, the, the heat gun is also really good for heat sealing your uh, props and armor pieces before painting them to close up all the pores so that you need less paint to paint them um, and you use less paint. Now that you've got all your pieces cut out and heat formed into the shape you want them, you need to have some way of gluing them together. So the main kind of glue that I use for gluing together pieces of EVA foam and cardboard and plastics is that was upside down, I apologize, is contact adhesive or contact cement. So the brand I like to use um, if you're in South Africa is Genkem contact adhesive. Um, I know over in the United States, one of the favorite brands is Barge contact cement. Um, and you can buy them in small tubes like this, or you can buy them in big tins or jars. Um, and this is a really great uh, glue to work with. Just a word of warning is sometimes it can give off toxic fumes. So it's always best to wear a respirator and to work in a well ventilated area. The way how this glue works is you apply it to the two pieces you want to glue together, you let them dry, and then on contact, they stick together. Like really, really well. If you glue two pieces of EVA foam together with contact cement and try to pull them apart, chances are the foam will rip before the glue comes apart. Another glue that I like to use for gluing on small detail pieces or for plastics that don't like contact cement, that don't glue well, is super glue or cyanoacrylate CA glue. Um, this can be found at most checkout tills or you know, craft store, supermarket. Um, it's a really great glue, just don't glue your fingers together. But if you do get any super glue on your fingers or anything, a really neat trick that I have found to get the glue off is to use nail polish remover with, it has to have acetone in it. Nail polish remover with acetone, put some of that on a cotton pad, rub it on your hands where you've got the super glue, and it should take off the super glue right off your hands. Um, I know something that I've struggled with a few times is my computer and my phone have a fingerprint reader, and if I've got super glue on my fingers, I can't get into my phone or my computer. So yeah, always having a bottle of the uh, nail polish remover with acetone in is a good idea to have handy when working with super glue. Now that you've got all your pieces glued together and hopefully you're starting to see your prop or armor piece come to life, you're gonna need to start finishing them off and making them look a bit neater, maybe adding some battle damage. And the tool that I like to use for that is a Dremel 4000 with the I believe this is called a snake arm attachment, but I could be wrong about that. I will probably check and put the correct name here, but I think it's a snake arm. Else, let me know down below in the comments uh, what the proper name for this is. I think it's a snake arm, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, so I love to use this tool for cleaning up the edges of my foam pieces, uh, for adding battle damage and scarring, and for sanding down any pieces of the foam. So this is a really great tool to have. Uh, it comes with a whole bunch of different bits that you can fit inside of here. It comes with sanding drums, it comes with uh, stone grinding bits, it comes with cut-off wheels if you want to cut sheets of uh, acrylic plastic or anything like that. So a really great tool to invest in. There are many different brands of rotary tools out there and they all work great. Or well, I can't say that they all work great. Um, I haven't tested out every single one. But there are a lot of great brands out there. So you don't have to get the Dremel version. Um, I believe Black & Decker make a version. The Ford Home Rotary Tool is really good. Um, there's a Torcraft one. Um, so yeah, so you don't have to get the Dremel version. There's lots of different versions of rotary tools out there um, that if you're on a budget, may fit better into your price range. Next up, a tool that I have found really great for adding battle damage and scarring to armor pieces and props is the soldering iron. So a soldering iron, you're probably thinking, but that's used for doing electronics and soldering circuit boards and stuff together. Well, it also gets really hot and it's really great for melting EVA foam. 
Um, so I have two types of soldering irons that I like to use. So the first is a standard electrical soldering iron for, that you can plug directly into the wall and it does take a while to heat up. Um, the second kind of soldering iron that I like to use is the Dremel butane powered gas soldering iron. Um, it just uses uh, lighter fluid that you'd normally put in a cigarette lighter. Uh, you fill it up from the bottom and this gets hot within seconds of turning it on and it comes with all sorts of great bits that you can add onto here. It comes with a knife bit, um, a small heat gun bit that you can use for melting parts of the cosplay. So these are these are two tools that I find incredibly useful for adding battle damage and scarring to a prop or cosplay. If you want to make it look like there's a trench that's been dug out or a blaster hole or something like that. So this is definitely a great tool to invest in. Another gluing method that I forgot to mention earlier is hot glue and a glue gun. Um, this is a really good tool to use for uh, cardboard um, and for cosplayers who are just starting out. Um, I wouldn't recommend gluing uh, an entire cosplay together with hot glue or a glue gun uh, made out of EVA foam, um, simply due to the fact that if you're like me and live in a country where it gets pretty hot, like in South Africa, uh, there are chances of the glue remelting while you're walking around a convention and your cosplay coming apart. Um, but that being said, I've still seen some incredible cosplays that have been put together with nothing more than a standard heat gun. Um, so I know a lot of people like to disregard the heat, the, did I say heat gun earlier? I meant glue gun. I know a lot of people like to disregard the humble glue gun, but I feel like it's got its place in a cosplay maker's toolbox. Um, sometimes there's just something that you can't do with contact cement or super glue uh, that the glue gun comes in handy for. It's also really great for making fake welds along a prop. If you want to make it look like uh, two pieces of metal have been welded together, you can run a bead of hot glue down the seam there, uh, go up and down every few centimeters or so, and it creates a really good weld effect. Sandpaper is something that I use pretty much on a daily basis, whether it's for sanding props or cosplays or anything like that. It is a really great material for sanding the edges of things, um, making sure that all your pieces are nice and smooth. Uh, if you're trying to achieve a sharp, polished look, um, it's a really great uh, tool to use to make sure everything's nice and smooth. In and it's really a good idea to have sandpaper in various different grits from probably about an 80 grit all the way up to maybe a 300 grit at different intervals. A metal ruler is fantastic for getting nice straight edges when you're cutting with your blade or for soldering nice uh, straight lines into your foam. And also it's got these handy measurements on the side. Um, so yeah, so it's great for that as well. Now, obviously you wouldn't be able to do any of this without a few pens and pencils for drawing out your pieces on foam and cardboard. So it's always a good idea to have lots of pens and pencils nearby for marking things out, drawing up quick designs all sorts of things like that. I like to keep a wide variety of paint brushes in my workshop, uh, from these uh, slightly thicker brushes, these small detail brushes, to even these foam brushes, uh, which I use for priming uh, pieces, painting pieces, weathering them. Uh, so yeah, so you can never have too many paint brushes or too many of one type of paint brush. It's always a good idea to have lots of different kinds of paint brushes for different purposes. A hole punch is a really great tool for creating holes in uh, pieces of EVA foam, in um, garments, uh, you can, uh, this one that I've got here, it is a multi-purpose hole punch and rivets, um, not rivets, uh, eyelets pusher, so you can create the hole, put an eyelet in, clamp down on it and add a nice little eyelet to the piece that you're working on, so it's also a really great tool that I like to use for adding another layer of detail to my pieces. Now that you have completed building your piece of armor or your prop, you're gonna to wanna to move on to painting. But before you can do that, you need to prime your piece. Now, as I already mentioned, you can use a heat gun to uh, heat seal your pieces, but it's also a really good idea to use some cold wood glue or some acrylic gesso to brush over your pieces to make sure that they've got a nice surface for the paint to adhere to. Um, you can also use something like Plasti Dip or Mod Podge 
but you've just got to find whatever material works for you. Okay, now moving on to paint. The main type of paint that I like to use for my album pieces and for my prop pieces is simple acrylic craft paint. Um, I use a brush to apply it and I get really good effects with it. If you live in South Africa, one of the brands that I absolutely love is Dala. I must have over about 40 different pots of Dala paint in all sorts of colors. They've got a really great metallic range. They come in these small little pots, these pots and even bigger jars if you need that much paint. So this is the main kind of paint that I like to use. I also sometimes use a spray paint rattle can paint. Um, this is if I want large coverage of a prop or armor piece. So yeah, spray paint is a good idea. Um, there's no one particular brand of spray paint that I like to use. Um, I know Krylon makes some good spray paints, um, Rustolia makes some good spray paint, but I just generally use whatever spray paint I can get my hands on. Um, so yeah. And so that's pretty much all the different tools and materials that I use for my cosplays. But there is one final thing that I want to mention, is safety wear. Obviously when you're working with all these different tools and materials, some of them give off fumes, um, like the, when you're heat forming the EVA foam or you're melting with a soldering iron. If you're sanding with a, with a Dremel, it's going to create a lot of dust. So it's always a good idea to have safety be your number one priority when working with these tools. So the three main safety pieces that I use in my workshop is first off a pair of safety glasses. And this is just to protect your eyes so that if anything comes flying off or anything shoots up while you're working, your eyes will be protected and you won't have any pieces of hot plastic or foam dust getting into your eyes. Secondly, a key thing to use is a respirator. I use one like this and it has got, it has got two attachments for a dust filter and for a vapors filter which so I use the dust filter when working with the Dremel and the vapors filter when I am working with the soldering iron or the heat gun. And lastly a good pair of work gloves. Um, I mostly only use these when I am working with the heat gun if I don't want to burn my hands. Um, I would not recommend using gloves when you're working with any kind of tool that's spinning uh, that's got a blade um, like I wouldn't recommend using these for the rotary tool or for um, any kind of electric saw whether it's a band saw or a table saw just because sometimes then gloves can do more harm than good um, uh, if there's rotating parts involved. So I mostly only use my gloves if I'm working with heat. Um, so yeah, one more tool which I forgot to mention is a pin cushion with pins. Now, I know I said earlier that this was going to be mostly about making hard pieces for armor and props. Um, and you're probably thinking, well, pins, what are those for? Those are generally used in sewing. Well, I like to use the pins to pin down my templates to the foam that I'm working with so that they don't move all around the place when I'm tracing them out onto the foam that I'm working with. And there we have it. That is pretty much all the different tools and materials that I like to use when building uh, cosplay props and uh, cosplay armor. So if you can think of any other tools and materials that I forgot to mention in this video, please let me know down below in the comments. Let me know any other thoughts that you had in the comments below or any improvements that I can have for my channel or to make these video videos better for you. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking this video and subscribing to see more of my content. I've also got a whole bunch of other videos on my channel uh, I've got some videos on making props, um, making some armor for different cosplays, so go check those out if you're interested. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram, which is at jacks.cosplay. If you want to stay updated on all the different projects and work that I'm doing, uh, to see some behind the scenes footage, um, and to be updated as I'm working on new projects. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time.